Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine, coming to you with the weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. I want to talk about a subject today that is very interesting. It's a marker, a blood marker that we include on our Cleveland Heart Panel called a TMAO. A lot of people have never heard that. Most doctors have probably never heard of it, but it turns out it's a very important blood marker uh, for to assess your risk of uh, heart disease and stroke. Um, it stands for trimethylamine N-oxide. That's a tongue twister, but just think T-M-A-O. It's on every Cleveland heart panel that I do nowadays. I added that about six months ago because it's very important in predicting your risk uh, for heart disease. It turns out that uh, T-M-A-O is a metabolite derived from your own gut bacteria. Um, and it's a very powerful predictor of heart attacks and strokes. Um, this blood level is produced from the liver after your intestinal bacteria digest a couple of things. One of them is L-carnitine, which you see mostly it's very high in red meat. And also choline and lecithin, which are found more in egg yolks, some meats, and full-fat dairy. Um, some of it's also found in your own bile, so you produce some of this naturally. Um, but it turns out that if you have a high marker of this, it can almost double your risk, about probably two and a half times your risk of a heart attack or stroke. So it's something you have to um, really look at a little bit. Um, even without smoking, diabetes, hi hypertension, uh, an increased level um, can be a real risk factor for you. So it's something that we're looking at pretty closely. Um, it, it turns out that this TMAO, if it's high, it turns on an inflammatory cascade that damages your arteries by making it easier for the cholesterol to kind of burrow into the arterial walls and form plaque. So it causes heart attack and strokes for the most part. Um, it also reduces the ability to, for the body to get rid of LDL, the, quote, bad cholesterol. Um, this may explain why we used to think that saturated fats uh, in animal foods were the main culprits in cardiovascular disease. Now we know that cholesterol and saturated fats aren't really the culprits, so it may be that this um, inflammatory cascade that is turned on um, by eating cert these certain types of foods can, in some people, elevate this TMAO level and um, cause heart attacks and strokes. Um, again, I always go to the gut when I'm looking at, at my patients uh, because most of your immune system is located in your gut, and it turns out most of your inflammation starts out in your gut as well. So this, this is a kind of a a mind-changing thing as far as a lot of uh, cardiovascular researchers have come up with. Um, so it's a very important development. And it's been, they've been studying this for a few years now, and it's just becoming into the mainstream a little bit. Um, so your gut microbiome is so important to your health. We talk it, about it all the time with autoimmune diseases and um, all the gut problems that people have and weight gain, et cetera. Um, some people have a great gut microbiome. Most people don't. Uh, so what do you do when that TMAO level is elevated? Um, it's, it's interesting to me because I checked mine about a year ago, and it was elevated. Um, you know, nowadays I don't eat hardly any red meat, and I certainly don't eat eggs anymore, which for some people can be the perfect food, just not for me. Um, it's going to be interesting because my brother, who's been a vegetarian, actually a vegan for about a year, um, he um, and I both got our Cleveland panels this week. So I'm going to kind of measure mine against his and see uh, if the vegan diet produces a lower TMAO, which I'm pretty sure it will, as to somebody who's not eating red meat or eggs 
but otherwise eats uh, fish, which can be seafood, especially can high, can have some carnitine in it. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with this. I'm kind of in a contest with him, so um, just stay tuned for that. But uh, so some people are more predisposed because of their particular gut uh, microbiome to have this increased TMAO. It's actually when you eat L-carnitine or consume choline or lecithin, then your intestinal bacteria actually turn it to TMA, which is processed by the liver, which turns it into TMAO. It's an oxidized form of TMA. So that's, that's pretty important. And it becomes a little bit controversial when you take a deep dive into it as to whether or not um, – some people it will turn on that inflammatory cascade. Um, so it's a little bit one of those new errors that we're studying, but of all the, the dives I've done on this, it seems like you don't really want a high TMAO level. So, um, and I certainly don't. So what can you do if it's up? Certainly you're going to have to adjust your diet. Um, like I did cut out your red meat and eggs for one thing. And also you'll find L-carnitine in, um, some of these energy drinks, which are bad for a lot of reasons, but that's another reason they're bad. Um, so um, a lot – think Mediterranean diet. You know, you can always eat a Mediterranean diet, which is going to be very heart healthy. I don't think anybody would argue that. Um, or maybe even a try a plant-based diet if your TMAO is elevated. You may, may want to try that if you can stick to it. It's very hard – for people to be vegetarian and vegans, in my opinion, but some people can, like my brother, and feel very healthy with it. Um, so what if it's high? Well, look at your other risk factors as well, like obesity, hypertension, diabetes, smoking, stress, poor sleep, lack of exercise, sleep apnea. Um, note that also increased TMAO can cause kidney disease, very commonly common cause for that probably even diabetes and colon cancer. So it's important. It's an important marker to look at. So you want to avoid these L-carnitine and extra choline supplements. Now, it's been postulated that phosphatidylcholine that you get in some supplements are, are okay. And I certainly take one that has that in it for my brain function. So choline by itself uh, is probably not that great for you for this phosphatidylcholine, probably okay. Um, there's some supplements that can decrease your TMAO. A lot of them are pretty commonplace, like vitamin D, which is your all-everything vitamin, really a hormone, uh, vitamin C, buffered, uh, the B-complex vitamins, resveratrol, eating pistachio nuts has really turned out to be very good for this. Brussels sprouts are very good for this. Uh Berberine is a good supplement to help bring this level down, too. So berberine not only helps bring your sugar levels down, uh, but it also will help bring your TMAO levels down as well. Hawthorne's a good one for this. Uh, quercetin, fiber in general, soluble fiber is very good for lowering those levels. Um, remember, you need to keep inflammation down in your body if you want to... Uh, not hurt and, and be as disease free as you can. Um, eat more plants um, and measure your TMAO level. Again, if you come in for a Cleveland heart panel, you're going to get this level. We're going to go over it and we're going to look at your diet. We're going to look at your other inflammatory markers as well um, and uh, assess your health from that standpoint. So um, think about that getting the Cleveland heart panel. Do your deep dive on TMAO. Very interesting. Thank you. This is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine. See you next week.